reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to anyone by whom they come. It would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender. And if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The word of the Lord. I hear in this interchange a kind of conversation about how much strength we have, how much strength our faith gives us whether or not it's a big thing or a small thing. And, and, and what I'm hearing juxtaposed in the story is a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. Um, it seems like Jesus is acknowledging that it doesn't matter how much faith you have or how strong your faith is, you're still going to stumble. There will still be setbacks. Uh, nothing you do is going to make you perfect and able to get this world right all the time. And he's acknowledging that that you just it doesn't matter how good and faithful of a person you are and how hard you try, sometimes it's going to fall flat. And Jesus says, you're not responsible for that. Uh, you won't be held to account for that. It just happens. But be careful not to be the person who is doing that to someone else. Now, maybe this is where our strength and our faith are a little stronger because we do have the power to make other people's lives easier or harder. We do have the ability to be there to help someone in need or to obstruct, to tear them down and to hurt them. So we're powerful enough to be able to do that. Jesus acknowledges that our faith can be strongest when we are able to forgive. And while our forgiveness doesn't have the power to take away the hurts in this world and it can't undo the damage that's been done, our faith can't do that. But our faith can help us to have the power to forgive somebody. And there is great and true power in being able to take somebody who has done wrong and who needs to make amends and who asks for forgiveness and, and is turning around and trying to live a different life, there is immense power in being able to bestow your forgiveness upon that person. It can literally be life-giving and restoring. It can heal relationships. There's amazing power in that. And then Jesus talks to his disciples who acknowledge that sometimes this seems so hard and it seems beyond us. To be able to have the strength to be forgiving even when you've been hurt and you just don't feel like forgiving. Lord, help us. Give us the faith for this. Increase our faith, Lord. We need more than what we have. We realize sometimes it feels like it's not going to be enough. And then in the midst of Jesus acknowledging that, yeah, sometimes it won't be enough. Sometimes it won't be enough to stop the hurts in this world. And it won't be enough to make you impervious from harm. But yet your faith will be enough. Your faith, even the size of a small mustard seed, will be enough. I know you feel like you need more in order to be able to forgive others, but really it just starts with the simplest, smallest, I forgive you. It sounds insignificant. It's just words. It's just a tiny action. But being able to look at somebody and being able to say, I forgive you, has so much more power than just that tiny little bit of faith, that tiny little seed. It can grow into something that can change your relationship to the world. It can be like uprooting a tree and planting it in the sea, telling it to plant itself in the sea and having it obey you. I've seen it myself. Maybe you have too. I've been there on the receiving end of it. To know how healing it is when I have hurt somebody and I feel like there's nothing I'm ever going to be able to do to make it right. 
and to have that person be able to say to me just the simple little words, I forgive you, and how that has changed my life. And now I hope to be able to take that seed that's been planted within me and do the same. You will have times where you will stumble in this world and there will be times where there will be a stump, people will be a stumbling block for you. And if you have the ability within you to use your faith just to say, you know what, I forgive you. You can change that relationship in the world forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hello, my brothers and sisters and siblings at St. James. My name is Bonnie Brooks, and I'm here because it's our annual pledge drive. For many years, I lived and worked in Chicago, but a little over a year ago, I relocated to my hometown of Washington, D.C., and now I have a church here in Northern Virginia. However, I'm still in the Midwest on a pretty regular basis, so I consider myself blessed to have not one but two church homes. And at this time of year, when we reflect on and prayerfully consider what our contributions will be financially and in terms of our time and our talents, I think about not one but two churches. I think a lot of us have what I would call a non-traditional relationship with St. James, whether it's someone like me who's a dual citizen or perhaps someone who primarily participates through watching our live stream videos or um, enjoys the sermons of the day that our clergy give us. There are many, many different ways to have a relationship with this community that don't always mean sitting in the pews. So I'm here to invite you to join me in prayerfully considering how we can participate with our resources and what God is asking of us as we consider how we can be people who help extend the kingdom of God in the places where we live and among the people that we spend time with. Thank you for considering this, and God bless.